Hey everybody, we're back again with another tutorial here on the Retro Arena, uh, formerly known as Odroid Retro Arena. It's Slappy McPhee, and we're going to go ahead and actually go over today installing uh, my Pi Shrink Hub from scratch. Um, and then we'll go ahead and also do uh, some steps to show the process on being able to use it to shrink um, your uh, images. So we're gonna go ahead and start off as if, you know, it's a brand new installation. Actually, I just recently uh, upgraded my PC, uh, so I don't even have my Pi Shrink Hub on here right now. So, first thing we're gonna need to do here is go ahead and swing on over to the website. And then head on over to Downloads. Scroll on down to the Pi Shrink Hub. So it's a portable virtual box build that's pre-packaged with instructions. I created a PDF for it. So I'm gonna be doing this install as if you know I'm a new user that's never actually used it before. So we're gonna go ahead and download. So it's just underneath a gig. And I'm going to go ahead and decompress it. All right, so here we are, and oh, look at that. See, look, this is so new that um, I actually don't even have a PDF reader on here yet. It's funny, I've been using this uh, new build here for a few weeks now, still don't have a PDF reader. But that's cool, we'll go ahead and go through this way. So it's a step-by-step -step guide to be able to have a small footprint pie shrink solution that runs in an easy to use virtual machine without actually installing a virtual machine to your PC. All right, so, um, this is being done on Windows 10. Um, this is using portable uh, virtual box. And so we've uh, had reports and actually just in general, I've seen people say that they've had issues with uh, using the portable version of virtual box on Windows 7 or 8, All right? So the minimum system requirements, um, six gigs of RAM, the more the better. I've got 32 gigs in here, so I don't have a problem. Uh, quad core CPU, if dual core is used, then you'll need to go into the settings system processor for your virtual machine and adjust the CPU counts from two to one, because you don't want to um, cause issues with the amount of cores you have. 4.5 gigs of storage space on your C drive for the portable virtual box itself, and enough storage space on your C drive for your image files. So, once again, the steps outlined here are expecting that you've already performed the read of your SD card or that you already have an image that you know needs to be shrunk to fit a certain size card. So, let's dig in. Step one, download the PyShrink zip file. So, we've already done that. We've already done the unzip. Okay. So, we want to go ahead and take the Slappy's PyShrink, right? We're going to go ahead and put it directly in our C drive. All right, there we go. All right, so we want to copy our image file.
All right, so I have a uh, an image here actually of a um, new copy of the bay that we're working on. And I'll go ahead and grab this because this can definitely be shrunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And per the instructions, it says copy your file to the PyShrink folder in the Slappy's PyShrink file. So we'll go ahead and do that. And this is gonna end up being a shared folder, right? And it's got the PyShrink script that you're gonna need along with the license file and the readme file. Um, the license is just DNU, so you don't need to worry about that. All right, so now we wanna to go to the Slappy's PyShrink folder and run the portable virtual box application. It will be extracting the portable version of the virtual box application, install the files to a folder. So we wanna accept the defaults and you'll now see a portable virtual box uh, folder appear. So this is copying over right now anyway. All right. There's the application right there. All right. Now what we want to do is open the portable virtual box application in the new uh, portable virtual box folder it created. So here's the application, right? So let's go ahead and see how this turns out. All right, select your language. In this case, obviously English. All right, so now we've got this here. I'm actually gonna move that over. All right. And as you can see, I annotated in here with photos what you're doing. If you don't place the folder um, specifically where I tell you to, by the way, with this, then you're uh, going to run into problems with your file mapping. So we already saw the user control, right? And now it came up with this box that we're seeing right over here. So after we choose the language, which I did do, check both extraction options in the portable virtual box, extract and or compress window that appears. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and click both. And then once done with that, we wanna click on download. And I didn't catch that in time, but um, make sure that you check the checkbox at this point to start after extraction. If you don't, it's no big deal, right? Um, but if the program does launch, go ahead and make sure that you close it and then click OK and let it do its thing. So now it's, it's good to go. So now we'll go ahead and click OK. And now it's extracting the files. It's copying files. There you go. So here we go. Please start VirtualBox again so all paths can be adapted. And you didn't see it because it was on my other screen, but it showed the uh, portable VirtualBox splash. So um, I'll go ahead and show you what happens here, right? Because you may end up seeing this, the same thing that I have here. I'll go ahead and grab this and bring it on the screen. So 
here you're going to go ahead and see that portable virtual box is actually running right so now we're going to go ahead and actually right click and quick excuse me right click and quit and now we'll go ahead and run it again And once again, I apologize because it put this off screen, but I'll go ahead and do a snip so you can see what it's showing. All right, so it says a new version's available and you can download it. We're not gonna download it because it could cause some possible problems. It depends on the patch level and version of Windows that you have, so just be aware of that. So I'm just gonna close out of that and the first thing that we want to do is actually come into here and go to check for updates it's going to tell you that same thing We, want, we don't want to check for updates at all. So that's a good thing for you to, because you don't want to accidentally update it and then possibly break things. I don't know if it's going to you know, cause any problems. It just depends. There's all kinds of different things. All right. So we kind of went through these steps, right? It says, after the program starts, just go ahead and close it. You'll see that a few new folders have appeared, which are all here. So now, what we want to do is, is that now that we have it, um, actually before we relaunch, and you just want to check to be completely sure that it actually did shut down. So you can always do that through your task manager. And we're not seeing it running. Yeah, you'll see my VMware tray in there, but you're not going to see anything actually having to do with portable virtual box. So that's good. The process has stopped. So now we come back here, we come to machines, and we want to go ahead and move the machines folder to where it's telling you, right? So we're going to go ahead and put it into the portable virtual box data dot virtual box. All right. Now that we have the, the VM in place, we're going to go ahead and open portable virtual box again. This time when it loads, go to the top menu, choose machines and add. It'll dump you into your machines folder and you're going to open the Slappy's Pie Shrink folder and select the VBox file. So now we're going to go ahead and click on Portable Virtual Box, get the UAC, okay, machine, add. We don't want to do new, we want to do add. Okay, and here we go. Open. All right. The VM will complete import into the Oracle uh, VM Virtual Box Manager, and you're ready to fire it up. And make sure your your VM Slappy Pie Shrink is highlighted, and click the green start arrow. So now we're gonna here. Now in this case, right, I have it set at, at three on the base. However, as you can see, you can't make an adjustment here, but you can right click and go to settings. And since I have 32 gigs of RAM, you know, I've got plenty of um, RAM that I can work with. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually bump this up to 16 gigs roughly. Okay. All right. So when we click on start, the VM is going to fire up and we're going to be greeted not only by the Linux Lite desktop, but also an audio treat. So um, 
I'll go ahead here and let's see. So we've got the desktop audio, but I'm going to turn it down a little bit here in my recording software just to be safe so you're not blasted. But it's selected, and we're going to go ahead and click start. We have the auto capture keyboard turned on. This will cause a virtual machine to automatically capture. Yes, I know that. Virtual machine supports Go Esmo. You know, you see a little bit here, right? So this was a little uh, thing that I did to be a little bit tongue in cheek. Uh, I created a little comic book here. And uh, so you can check that out if you want. If you want to go ahead and shut the music off, of course, you can just come into here and you can mute and now it mutes it. But otherwise I have a customized track. All right, so we've got that muted, okay? Now, the thing about this is, is that, um, Everything's already pre-mapped for you. So the pie shrink files and everything, and that's the reason why you put it where I tell you to put it. So when you launch the VM, it'll auto-log in. You'll be prompted for the root password performing a shrink, and it's osboxes.org. So remember how we moved um, that image to the pie shrink files folder? Well, here in the virtual machine, you can see it right there. So once you get to this point, okay, um, I've already got instructions for you on the desktop, so you can click right here and it tells you exactly what you need to do in order to be able to perform this shrink. And that's all kind of talked about here, um, but I'll go ahead and walk through it of course as well. And we'll go ahead and see about shrinking this one image. So. What I typically like to do is, is I'll open up the instructions. So I have it here. Uh, you can right click and go to rename. You want to make sure you grab the .img, copy this, cancel. And now it tells you to do it, of course, there in the instructions too, but you want to open a terminal here. Okay, so you got the terminal ready. And then what you can do is Go ahead and throw this right into the example. And then you can copy this and slap it right into the terminal window. Okay. So one of the things, there's a couple ways you can do this. If for some reason you don't want to be left with just your shrunk image and you still want to have the original in the folder. I can't really think of any reason why unless you know you decided that you were going to copy the original or excuse me move the original from where you'd actually done your your backup with something like when disk imager etc um, you can actually use a different syntax here and um, it'll go ahead and you use this one instead and essentially what you're doing is is that you're going to say, hey, I'm going to put, for example, this name here. And then you're going to have a space. All right, so there's your space. And then you're going to go ahead and put it again. And essentially what it's going to do is, is that it'll do a shrink. You'll end up having two copies and you'll have one that's shrunk now you're going to want to put in your new image file name so you'd want to change it a little bit right because they can't have the same file name even if they're the same size so it's just kind of best practice you could do you know dash one or or whatever but i'm going to come back up here i'm going to go ahead and grab copy paste it in hit enter now as you can see once again it's prompting you for that password and here's your password right here, right? osboxes.org. And the shrink operation's happening. 
So now it's actually taken that image and it has shrunk it from 7.5 gigs down to 5.3. And your image is now shrunk. Um, with um, the XU4, um, like some people will tell you, oh, well, you can also use Pi Shrink to expand or, or whatever, but um, it doesn't work the same way um, with this. The, the syntax is not the same. So that's the reason why um, we actually end up having to do uh, auto expand uh, code that we have to put in ourselves. Or conversely, um, like we go ahead and tell you on our website in our FAQ, if you come in here down to item 22, it'll walk you through, right? Which we uh, actually talked about this on the EMMC tutorial, but. Um, it just walks you through on how you can actually um, manually expand your image, right? Um, the thing about this is, is that uh, you want to be sure that you're logged in as root. If you're not logged in as root and you're doing these operations with Pi Gaming, then you're going to have to use sudo in front of these commands. So it would be sudo cd, uh, excuse me, you're just changing directory there, it'd be sudo chmod, sudo chown sudo and then resize sh so um, now that we're done with this we can just exit out of this terminal we can close nope i don't want to make any i don't want to save that close down that and now i can go ahead and shut down my virtual machine now depending upon your file size um, we'll determine uh, how long it takes to shrink obviously you get into 128 uh, 256 400 you know those are going to take a while to shrink um, and then also of course as well conversely right that's also going to be determined by your um, what you're giving it for system memory you know um, in the default like I said I was at three for memory and then two for processors but in all honesty like if you've got you know um, a better processor like if you've got a um, more CPUs right so my um, i5 that I have in this machine actually has 12 CPUs so I could actually pop this up if I wanted to you know maybe go with four um, so you know I strongly recommend that if you're running Windows 10 when you're gonna go ahead and do this shrink um, you know don't be doing other stuff and as you can see once you get used to doing this it's really zippy and snappy so you know you'll be done in a few minutes anyway so there's really no need to try to multitask and do other things so that's it for this tutorial guys uh, I hope that you found it helpful and we'll see you on the next one